When it comes to performing a boolean, one of my favorite ways is to use the hotkey of control numpad minus, which is the classic bull tool hotkey. However, you can also perform a boolean by just pressing Q with both objects selected and choosing difference, which will be the first object in the menu. You can also press Q and go under the Boolean submenu in the Q menu and choose something like interactive Boolean where you can actually scroll through different types of Boolean results that you want and even press T during interactive Boolean to adjust something like the inset. Uh, another way that you can also set up a Boolean is if you go inside of Hops tool, just being in Hops tool will allow you to hold control and bring up what I call the infinity ring. And whenever you click on cut, it will just perform a cut. In fact, we can duplicate this shape, hold control, just set up our booleans like so. So it's actually very easy to set up booleans in hard ops. We have a multitude of ways to do it. In fact, to expand on that even more, we can select both of these objects, press shift Q, and we can go inside of our hard ops Q pie, and we can also choose boolean here. We can duplicate this shape over here, select both objects, bring down the hops drop down, and we can also choose to set up a Boolean like so. So when it comes to hard ops and Booleans, there's more than one way to set up a Boolean. So we have this shape and it's loaded with Booleans. And so if we were to move the mesh, it will not go. And for this reason, we have found that this happens a lot. Even if you were to be working in box cutter and you had parent shape on, and you were working, you would still be able to only move that shape. So how would we be able to retroactively fix this parenting? Well, this is where you can press Q, go under operations, and there's an option called late parent. And if we hover over it, this connects cutters as children to their parents. So we click this, we see that there are six booleans, five of them were parented, one of them was selected. And so now, we are able to move this object around freely. And so that's where late parent comes in to help you. So what if you want to perform parenting without having to go to late parent? What if you want to set up your parenting off the bat to actually be correct? So we'll actually shift D duplicate this cube and we'll select this one and we'll press Q and choose difference. And because it's a operator, that means there's an F9. So we'll press F9 and we actually have a toggle here for parent. So by toggling this, this means that from now on, if we were to duplicate this shape and perform a difference, we can see that both of them are parented. But just to show this with a neutral shape and not a duplicate, we'll add a new cube, select both of these and perform a difference. And we see that this one is parented. So you can actually correct it on your very first cut in the F9 to prevent these sort of things from happening. When it comes to hard ops, we also care about preemptively allowing users to set up this behavior. As you saw, we have it in box cutter when you can press Alt W and under behaviors, turn on parent shape, which will preemptively set this behavior for you. But it, you can do the same thing in hard ops as well. We'll press control tilde to bring up the hard ops helper. And by expanding the bull options, we can actually toggle bull sharpen parent bull shapes. And what this means is that whenever you Whenever you perform a Boolean, the shapes will be parented. And if you perform a sharpen, late parent will also be performed as well. So just to show both of those in action. So we'll duplicate this shape and perform a difference. And we see that it just works without us having to trigger the F9. We could press Alt W, switch over to hops tool. We see that it also carries over. We can select these two and use the hotkey. And we see that that works. We can go up at the top and bring down the hops drop down and show that all of these are connected to the same parameter and thus are able to reap the benefits. So I started over with the new scene and if we press control tilde under our bull options, we can see that bull sharpen is on. I'm just gonna turn that off real quick and we're just gonna duplicate this cube and perform a difference and we're gonna grab another cube and perform a difference and we're just going to duplicate around just keep setting up differences just like we would in fact you could see why uh qd is such a thing you could just press qd just be part of the qd gang just qd just quick set differences but we can see that when we move this shape it doesn't work so for this this is where you could go in and turn on bull sharpen sharpen is something that i use at junctions in a workflow Sharpen actually comes up because I have a single object selected, of course. If I had two objects selected, it would go back to showing difference like it is here. But 
Sharpen is used at various intervals to allow me to just kind of realign things. Like if I want to set up auto smoothing and begin moving in the direction of uh, beginning to get that final shading, I could run Sharpen and it'll run Sharpen plus Parent, which will actually perform that operation. So it's just another way to keep people able to deal with their parenting both preemptively and both uh, retroactively as well. Let's say you're working a box cutter, you perform a few cuts, and you decide you want to move your object, and this happens. When it comes to box cutter, if you were to have parent shape on as a behavior by default, then any shape that you draw would be parented to the main box, just like the shape I just drew. However, at this point, we are actually too deep to get back the original parenting. And that's where hops comes in. So we'll press Q under operations, we'll choose late parent. And now this object has all of its children parented to it. And now we're good to go. One of the most common hard ops box cutter questions I get is how do you cut a duplicate? So I'm going to just switch over to box cutter and we're just gonna do a cut. And I'm gonna press Alt D to do a link duplicate. And you can see that the link duplicate is actually connected to the same cutter data. So that means that I'm not able to actually move the shape away due to that link of data there. However, in addition to that, if I were to Alt D duplicate this, even worse is if I go back to this shape and I were to attempt to apply the modifier, you can see that the modifier can't be applied due to this being linked data. And you can actually see it say it can't be applied on multi-user data. So this is something that's always been a thorn in our side, even since the days of 2.79. So for me personally, when it comes to working on a duplicate, um, a better way to make a duplicate, in my opinion, would be a collection. So if I were to press Control G, uh, I've created a collection and I could press F9 and bring this up and we'll just call this Q. And if I were to Shift A and actually add a collection instance of Q, we can move this over to the side and I could just continue working on this. And it's as if the, the other thing never happened. So this is actually the preferred way of working in duplicates when it comes to hard ops and box cutter when it comes to booleans. Of course, we can still you know deal with mirroring and start mirroring the shape and all that stuff. And no matter what we do to this, it'll still update on this link duplicate. In fact, I can shift D and you know bring this collection instance out, maybe SCZ minus one to make it an opposite facing one. And we can just keep working on this as if you know, that other piece isn't even there. So I'm going to bring out a circle here. We're just going to extend it up just enough, just being weird here. And we'll bring this down to build some sort of base. But you see that I'm able to just continue working on this piece on the side and these two pieces on the other side continue to be updated. So while this isn't the most optimal solution that people would like, it's definitely one way to work that would definitely be assistive for helping you get where you need to go without having to um, you know, pull your hair out. In fact, we'll just do a little work down the side here, maybe Q to round it out. And we could even roll this cutter back just to um, really quarantine some of these shading mishaps. Let's try that again. There we go. And hopefully that should um, shed some insight on working with duplicates. When it comes to collections and making them real, you can press Control A, and there's this option here to make duplicates real. So if we Control A and hit that, we can see that that actually makes that real. Let's try it again. In fact, more than likely, we have to run something like Smart Apply on this shape. And then from there, we can actually make these instances real. In fact, Control A, make instances real. And now this is a real piece of geo I'm able to access and is actually connected to the link geometry still. So if we were to switch over to box cutter and do another cut, we could see that this cut occurs on this one, but it doesn't propagate over to these linked pieces. So that puts us back where we started, where we need to apply it. So the only way to do that would be to locate the object data and disconnect it. So we'll just disconnect that object data 
and then we see that the apply button is actually available. And then we could select both of these and select this, press control L and just relink their object data if so, I mean, if needed. So hopefully that should shed some insight on that as well.